<laughs> I love you. Oh, my God. What? Did you just say what I think you said? What do you think I said? I don't know. Say it again, and I'll tell you if you said what I think you said. I love you. Now, write it down. Sandy. I'm just enjoying it, that's all. I'm enjoying it a lot. So? Now what? Well, you go do your rounds, and I tell my mother she can pull her head out of the oven. <laughs> hey. What? Come on, I want to hear you say it. Oh, okay. You love me. <laughs> beautiful day. Is it just a beautiful day? The sun is shining, birds are chirping, God is good, and all is right on her. Yeah, and somebody's boffing Sandy. <laughs> I think it's wonderful when a person finds love and is able to share it with others. It's a miracle how joy like this brings out the kindness and generosity and goodwill of all people. Good morning, Dr. Kaplan. Back off, you hussy. He's mine. <laughs> What's this? Mr. Tabor is back? He's having trouble with his medication again. I don't understand why he's having these bizarre reactions. I'm really worried. I feel like I've overlooked something. Oh, I have no doubt that you'll find the answer, Hank. You're brilliant. You're thorough. You're concerned. And I've never seen anyone use so much styling gel so stylishly. Thank you, Gina. I'll be taking care of Mr. Tabor. And believe me, I will help you figure this out. Great, great. And I'll fix the styling gel thing after we're married. Well, I got the part. I'm going to play the leading man in that new training video for nurses. What, you're going to train other nurses how to torture doctors? No, you can't teach that. You either have it or you don't. So I'll settle for that CPR thing. Well, if you're going to be the leading man, that means you have to be a leading lady. Now is the winter of our discontent. Out, out, damn spot. Julie, I had no idea you were interested in acting. Oh, yes. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a movie star. One time, my brother and I even staged our own Academy Awards. He presented, I accepted, he read the rules. I did a medley of the nominated songs. I won for Shaft. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Nothing I'd like more than to hear a white girl from Maine sing Shaft. <laughs> hey, Maine happens to be a very hip state. <laughs> Annie. Annie, I have the most wonderful news to tell you. Steve told me he loves me. Can you believe it? He loves me. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm just so incredibly happy. Hmm. Annie, is something wrong? No, why? Well, I don't know if you've noticed it, but whenever I mention Steve, all you do is say, hmm, and walk away. I do that? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> you don't have to tell me what's wrong, because I know exactly what's wrong. You think he's too young for me. No, I don't. I don't give a damn how old he is. Well, then come on, Annie. Tell me what's the matter. You're my oldest friend. We've been friends since... Oh, my God. Do you realize when I first met you, Steve was just making the transition to solid food? I knew it was bothering you. It doesn't bother me. Of course it does. What you talking about? I'm talking about Chef. John Chef, can you dig it? <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Tabor. Hank is working very hard to figure out what's wrong with your medication. Now, tell me, Gina, how are things between you and Hank? <laughs> We have a saying in my country, Mr. Tabor. You can't force a plant to grow. You have to water it. You have to nurture it. You have to push back the roots. Nothing, huh? Sip. 
But I'm becoming very adept at metaphors. <laughs> hey, who sent you the flowers? Oh, uh, my brother. Oh, really? Well, that was very nice of him. Not many men would think to send flowers. And again, not many men are named Judy. <laughs> Judy? Oh, Judy, my niece. <laughs> What's the matter with me? You know, I saw that first letter and I thought it said George. You thought it said... Yeah, George. Oh. Well, I'll see you a little later, okay, Mr. Taylor? Hank, I really have to talk to you. And believe me, it's not just another pathetic bid for your attention. Well, what is it, Gina? Something happened just now that makes me believe that your Mr. Tabor cannot read. Can't read? I never even considered that. That would explain his condition. If it's true, he probably confused his medication. Can you find out for sure? I'll do my best. <laughs> You're wonderful. Mm. Thank you, Gina. Hung, Hung, did I tell you about Mr. Porter in 318? <laughs> he can't smell. <laughs> Okay, that was a pathetic bid for attention. Boy, that Steve is just terrific. And everybody seems to like him. It's an immediate thing. They look at him and boom, they like him. But I guess as long as he's crazy about me, I couldn't care less what other people think. You hate him, don't you? I didn't say that. Annie, he's perfect for me. I have such a good time with him. He's spontaneous. He makes me feel young, and he loves me. Now, what could possibly be wrong? I have learned one thing in my lifetime. Never, ever tell a friend what you think about her boyfriend. That, and never ask your husband, do I look fat in these pants? <laughs> Annie, come on. No way. Now, I once told someone that her man was a freeloading, womanized, and low-life bum, and she married him anyway. And she wouldn't talk to me for two whole years. Then what happened? You divorced him. Hi, Julie. I brought you a copy of the script. Oh, thank you so much. Annie, this is Simone. He's going to be directing the nurse's training video. Hello. I want you to know that I'm going to work very hard to bring this script to life. I'll find every nuance. I'll play every level. What's my character's name? Nurse number one. I like her already. <laughs> You're laughing at pulmonary resuscitation? <gasps> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> hey, Julie, did Damone drop off the script? Oh, yes, you should read it. It's wonderful. <laughs> pulmonary resuscitation? It's so true. <laughs> well, what do you think? Isn't it wonderful? Admittedly, the ending is a little predictable. I mean, the guy lives. What do you mean the ending? This is it? Where are my lines? I don't believe you have any. Well, it must say something about my part. Let's see. Oh, yes, here it is. Note, if volunteer is not available, the part of the victim can also be played by CPR dummy. <laughs> oh, I want to be in love. I am in love. No big deal. I'm in love and somebody loves me back. Well, naturally, that would be a much bigger deal. <laughs> you know, I dream of falling in love. Who am I kidding? I'd be happy just to fall asleep. <laughs> Is it just me, or does anyone else worry that they'll stop breathing in the middle of the night? Show of hands? It's just you, Julie. <laughs> Truth is, sometimes it's difficult to fall asleep when you're in a relationship. The bed's small, the room's hot. There's a highly educated naked physician next to you. You know, at the height of a sexual peak and all. <laughs> Personally, I'd give anything to have a physician in my bed. I wouldn't even have to be naked, just, you know, there monitoring my vital signs, making sure I'm still breathing. Am I crazy? Show of hands. Knew it. Sam! There you are. I have some very exciting news. Sit down, this is huge. I just found out, and I want you to be the first to know. Hey, Steve, congratulations. I heard you got accepted at the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> Steve, the Mayo Clinic, well, that's, that's in Minnesota, isn't it? Yeah. What do you think? I think Minnesota is a far way away from Miami. Sammy, I want you to come with me. What? Come with you? You expect me to arbitrarily pick up everything I own and just move to Minnesota on a lark? I'm asking you to marry me. Oh. 
marry you? Oh, Steve, this is so sudden. I mean, you've taken me totally by surprise. I'm going to need time, sweetheart. Time to think, you know, time to examine my feelings. I'm done. Okay, let's do it. You're saying yes? I'm saying yes. Oh, I love you. Mm. We'll talk more tonight, okay? I just heard something interesting. Paco told me that Steve proposed to you. Did you say yes? Well, of course I said yes, Annie. I have a chance to marry a man that loves me and moved to Minnesota. Where life is a little easier and, and people are a little nicer. They actually have seasons. Okay, so three of them are winner. But still, you know, Annie, it's Sandy. You haven't liked this relationship from the very beginning. And no matter what you say to me, I know it's because of his age. Come on, Annie, can you honestly tell me you've never been interested in a younger man? What does that got to do with anything? When? Right before I was married. Name? Phil. Age difference? Six years. Why'd you break up? He wore me out. <laughs> and you want to deny me that? <laughs> Look, Sandy, it's not just about his being young. Well, then what is it about? It's about your being stupid. You're not thinking. You feel good. You feel pretty. You feel happy. So let's not ask any questions. Let's just pick up and run off to Minnesota with someone we hardly know and hope that all of these good feelings are enough to make this thing work. You only knew Fred for two months before you got married. That's different. Fred, you can figure out in a half an hour. <laughs> I'm Julie, your recessa bag girl. <laughs> and today I'll demonstrate the proper way to use this little piece of CPR, life-saving equipment. And boy, am I glad they have it. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, that my lungs are filled with water. Let's watch. Cut. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm just ad-libbing. I thought it would add to the fun and believability of the scene. No, just lie down, perfectly still, and don't say a word. And action. Hello. I'm Julie. Cut. 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 What are you, a moron? You are a non-speaking victim. A useless prop. But I just thought if I... Hey, hey! I am losing patience with both of you. What did I do? You know him. <laughs> now, please, just get back into position. And action. Uh, just a thought. Don't you think we should up the emotional stakes of this video by letting the audience get to know me so they'll have a vested interest in my story? What audience? This is a training video. Now, lie down and shut up. And action. Hello. Cut! Cut! I didn't say anything. I know, I know, but I'm thinking about what you did say. And I think you might have a valid point. You're going to give me some wine? No. But I think that in order to get emotionally vested here, what we need is an aerial shot of you walking across the parking lot. Just an average Joe, not a care in the world, and then, bam, tragedy strikes. Right, exactly. So what I'd like you to do is go downstairs, okay. out of the hospital, yeah. way across the parking lot. Out of here. You stand there. You wait for my signal. Gotcha. <laughs> you. You want to be in a movie? Sure. Lay down. <laughs> so, what's your name? Lance. Lance Savage. Good afternoon, Mr. Tabor. <laughs> Guess what? I decided to do something about Hank. I want to write him a love letter. Do you think you could help me? My English is not very good. Say no more. Say no more. Take this down. My darling Hank. When you smile, I am in ecstasy. Your touch is like velvet, your eyes are like jewels, and your hair is like, well, it's like... What is it with this guy's hair? I'm working on it. <laughs> Wonderful, Mr. Tabor. Now, how do you spell ecstasy? Ecstasy? Oh, well, ju just the way it sounds. So, two Q's and a P? Exactly. And then I guess we're through, huh? I think you've said everything you need to say. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Tabor. You have no idea how frustrating English can be for me. See, when I first came to this country, I couldn't read or write the language. Oh, I walked into men's rooms, I got on the wrong buses. I experienced some very severe tire damage. 
Then I said to myself, this is no way to live my life. So I took a reading course at the high school, and it worked. At first, I thought I would be embarrassed, but there were many adults in the class, some from my country, some from your country, some from the world of football. Well, Gina, I'm sorry things were so hard for you. Uh, luckily for me, I, I don't have that problem. <laughs> no, of course you don't. Well, thank you very much for your help, Mr. Taver. You know, sometimes people need help with things that are difficult. Whoa. Am I early? No, no, you look beautiful. <laughs> well, finally I get to see the mystery apartment. Uh. Why is it every night after work we end up in my place? Because your bed is four minutes closer to the hospital. Oh, yeah. Still, this is pretty nice. Yeah. Like your lava lamp. That's our lava lamp now, Sandy. <laughs> and I'm sorry about the mess. Oh, I know. I bought that from the last intern who lived in this apartment. Well, hey, what's the difference? When we move, we can leave all this stuff here. I mean it, Steve. Leave it here. Would you like some wine? I'd love some. Come over here. Sit down and tell me a story. Yeah. Tell me what our life is going to be like when we're married. Okay. What part of our life? Oh, like kids. How do you feel about kids? Good. Good. Kids are good. <laughs> Great. So when do you want to have them? Uh, I don't know. You know, um, when we're ready. Listen, we have got better things to talk about right now. For instance, I already know where we're staying in Minnesota. What? I've got a friend from college who's got a house there. We get the whole downstairs. Oh, you are going to love Booger. Booger? <laughs> yeah. He's a cardiologist. I'm going to be working with him at the Mayo Clinic. Wait a second, Steve. Let's hold the Mayo. <laughs> you don't just make decisions about our life together without talking to me first. I'm sorry. I didn't know I had to clear things with you. Oh, I don't mean clear things. I mean discuss things. We're going to get married. I think it's time we talk about things like family and finances and life goals. Great. Why don't we discuss that in the bathtub? Steve, we're not going to find any answers to these questions by jumping into bed. That's the genius of the bathtub idea. Come on. What? This is important. Look, I know this relationship works when we're in bed and having fun, but... I'm beginning to have doubts about us being able to make adult decisions together. What is all this? Huh? All these questions and the problems. This isn't the Sandy that I know. But this is the Sandy you're going to marry. It is? Yes. Oh, Steve. You're wonderful and I'm crazy about you, but... Our conversation is starting to make me think maybe this all happened just a little too fast. <sighs> this is because I'm younger than you, isn't it? Maybe a little. Oh, don't you see? You're going to grow and change, and maybe in six months you'll be glad you didn't make this decision. That's not true. I'm not going to grow or change. <laughs> Still, I think you ought to go to Minnesota for your residency. No way. You know, I'm not going without you. I'll just stay here. Steve, you have to go. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Come on, it's only two years. We can call each other. We'll write. Don't think you're getting rid of me, Sandy. Because as soon as I finish, I'm coming right back here to get you. Okay. You believe me, don't you? Sure, honey. I believe you. Yeah, I know I look like an orderly. But I got this new training video out now. I'm fielding other offers with some good management. I could really hit big. And then this hospital, they'll be sorry they didn't see my full potential. Yeah, they won't have Paco to push things around anymore. Excuse us, Paco? <laughs> well, Mr. Tabor, they're releasing you tonight, and so I have a little present for you. <laughs> what is it? I've color-coded your medication bottle. What? See, your blood pressure medicine is here in the red bottle. Your cholesterol pills are here in the yellow bottle, and your diabetes pills are now in this blue bottle. Well, this is all very nice, Gina, but why did you do this? Because, Mr. Faber, I know that you cannot read. Oh. 
Here is his phone number. If you decide to do something about this, these people can help you. You think I'm, uh, stupid, don't you? Oh, no, Mr. Tabor. I think you're a very intelligent man who doesn't know how to read. A person is only stupid when they don't take advantage of an opportunity that's staring them right in the face. Morning. Like him? Exactly. <laughs> the man doesn't have a clue. Well, bye. Goodbye, Mr. Tabor, and good luck to you. Thank you, Gina. I think Mr. Tabor's going to be just fine. Well, that man owes you a lot. Frankly, so do I, Gina. Well, thank you, Hunk. Perhaps it is true what they say, that we sometimes overlook what is right before our eyes. Uh, perhaps. I, I found that thing that you and Mr. Tabor wrote in his room. Not the love letter. Yes, I'm afraid so. The velvet touch, the eyes like jewels, the whole thing. <laughs> Then you know. Yes, I do. Apparently the man was absolutely crazy about me. <laughs> Not a clue. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Annie. What is it, honey? I... You're upset. Because I... You broke up with Steve. And I'm... You're not going to Minnesota because you realized that maybe it was too soon and maybe he is too young. Yeah. Oh, honey. <laughs> Annie, there's one more thing I have to tell you. I really resent you thinking... That I know you so well. Because you don't. I know. I know, honey. I know. <laughs> Coming up next, it's an all-new episode of Sisters, and it's a Sunday night special with an all-new night court on a special night and time, Sunday at 8, 7 central. Then for the first time on TV, it's the network television premiere of the box office smash, Back to the Future 3, starring Michael J. Fox, Sunday.